I'm holding in my hands something really pretty amazing. It's a recently discovered piano piece by the composer Johannes Brahms. A single sheet of manuscript paper and a beautiful tune in A minor, you can see right here. But in fact, this piece is really more than just a tune. It's really a little gem of a work with a proper beginning, middle and end. It was authenticated last year by the Brahmsian community of musicologists as being real, proper Brahms. But it was brought to the attention of us here at Music Matters by the scholar and conductor Christopher Hogwood after he first saw it last autumn in the library of Princeton University in America in a moment of sheer scholarly coincidence and amazement for Christopher. Well, Christopher has now edited the piece for the publisher Bärenbreiter, and you're about to hear this work by Johannes Brahms. And we're generous people here at Radio 3 and Music Matters, uh, so we went to the very best. The great Hungarian pianist Andras Schiff will play this piece by Brahms. Well, Andras and Christopher joined me in the Music Matters studio for this momentous performance, which you're just about to hear. But first, Christopher takes up the story. Well, it had no title, but it was part of um, a guest book that Brahms had signed and said thank you in 1853 in Göttingen, where he'd been giving um, a violin and piano recital with uh, Remini. And they'd stayed, or obviously been entertained, by the music director. And he had this book mm -hmm. in which you can also find Mendelssohn, Schumann, Clara Schumann, Franz Liszt, Paganini, everybody who was anybody, obviously, went to Göttingen and played and left their thank yous in usually a fragment of their music that people would have recognised from somewhere else. Andras Schiff, uh, how long have you uh, seen the piece and what was your reaction when you first saw the, the facts that uh, the publisher's beer and writer sent you through of Christopher Hogwood's edition of this Brahms piece? That was just a few days ago. <laughs> and uh, obviously I'm thrilled and, and really honoured because, you know, I mean, how often do you come across a chance like that in life by a, by a major composer, a composer I happen to adore. So it's very, very exciting indeed. Well, Andras, let's, let's hear it then. The piece that Christopher has given the title of Album Platt, a, a little leaf of an album by Brahms. Eagle-eared listeners uh, may be pricking up their ears at, at home. Uh, Christopher Hogwood, uh, the, the tune, the main melody of that piece is familiar to people who love Brahms. Where does it come no, from or where is it piece, more familiar from? The whole piece is frankly familiar and which is uh, why when you ask how did I react to it, um, my reaction was very much coloured by the fact that I was three quarters of the way through re-editing the Opus 40 horn trio. And, of course, as soon as you look at that piece and, and realise what it's saying, it is the Scherzo's trio of, in, the, in the, of trio. the horn trio with a little bit of, of adaptation, but basically everything that is in the horn trio is contained in that uh, piano piece, which is 12 years earlier than the horn trio. So Brahms was 20 when he wrote that. You feel that it, it it must have come extremely naturally to him. I mean, it sounds so, uh, yeah, as if he was just writing it down at the same time that he's hearing it almost. It, sound, it sounded so natural. It does sound like an improvisation, and it's most spontaneous. And it's also a, a very carefully notated manuscript, which is maybe a contradiction if I say it's like an improvisation, but there are all kinds of um, uh, performance markings there. Uh, it's like accelerandi and ritardandi, so, um, so I'm sure he, 
he thought about that character. Mm. Do you think, do you both of you think that this piece has something to tell us uh, more broadly about Brahms? The sense that there could have been, there probably were, pieces or sketches or versions of things that ended up in his symphonies or, or his later piano pieces, say, but Brahms burnt them, so we just don't know, we don't know about them. There were a lot of antecedents. He worked very hard. He rewrote the most famous is the Opus 8 piano trio which was published in, in its early version, and he was afterwards so ashamed of it, he wrote a completely other version of it and allowed the two publications to go on side by side. But usually he was never so frank, and he did his best to hide everything that he could lay his hands on. But well, Rogers, you feel that you, you're meeting the 20-year-old Brahms when you play this piece? Yes, absolutely, but I, he, he has nothing to be ashamed of. It's a, it's a very beautiful piece. I mean... It's very difficult to, to judge this because we know the horn trio, but if, if we didn't know the horn trio, it could be a little intermezzo, let's say. Mm. I mean, Brahms wrote later, towards the end of his life, a you know, series of short piano pieces, intermezzo, this could be one of them. And it is, it is such a fantastically beautiful melody. It doesn't matter where it comes from or where we've heard it before. Here it is for the first time in 1853, uh, and it's a, a fantastic thing to hear. <laughs> 